Hey everybody, I have the pulse motor running and I'm, I have a little tiny 6 volt battery powering it right now. I have got the input going into the 12 volt power source on the front of this device now instead of on the back. I noticed, sorry about the glare in the camera, there's dirt inside. The um, I was using the back and I noticed it was using some power. There was an LED light on and uh, so it must have been using some power and I was pulling just under half an amp on the current. Let me see if I can clean this camera. No, there's dirt inside the camera. Well, anyway, I hooked up an amp meter, an analog amp meter, and you will see now that the current being drawn is maybe 100 milliamps, if that. You can see that the first uh, mark is 500 milliamps, half an amp. The second mark with the longer slash is 1 amp, and then 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is 0 to 30 amps. So this is barely, barely registering. So it's not even half an amp. I'd say 100 milliamps at most. So this is pulling 100 milliamps of power. And I just measured this, and forgive me, it's awkward with my hands not free when trying to hold the camera, but I just measured this battery bank after running all day um, for, well, about four, maybe three, four hours today so far. And it is now at seven and a half volts. Now this battery was at one and a half volts before I started. So seven and a half volts is certainly uh, a good... Oh, weird. Must be the flexing of the thing. I push here and I hear noise here. Anyway, um, seven and a half volts is certainly something because a conventional charger could have done nothing for this at one and a half volts. And that without having a starter battery, a jumper battery connected to it. So we'll let this run and see what happens. And I'm gonna play around with the timing and the current consumption of this. I also have a solar panel, a 6 volt solar panel in the window right here connected to this little guy, this little 6 volt battery to help charge it. Although it's dark today, there's no sunlight. So it's not really pull it, putting anything back into the battery. So eventually I'm going to have to take that off and charge that little battery. And I don't have any little batteries to power the motor in the meantime. So I'm hoping I can restore something before that little guy runs out. And we'll see what happens. Morning everybody. I have this battery here. All right, there's two batteries. This one was at 0 0.5 volts when I started, okay? And I've been playing with that for I think one or two hours with this device in all. I'm going to stop the motor. I've got my voltmeter here. Show it Melanie, please. Melanie's holding the camera. I've got my voltmeter here. Now, I'm going to measure show up here again. I'm going to measure this battery with the generator stopped and show the voltmeter, Melanie. We have 1.5 and dropping. This settles at about half a volt, all right? It just came off the charge, so it settles at half a volt. Now, the other battery has not been restored or charged at all, and we're sitting at 0.5 volts. 0 0.5 volts, that's half a volt, okay? Back to the other one that I would just had on the charger a little bit. This is going to settle under one volt. So these things are dead, all right? Now I'm going to hook these two batteries up together with, well, super thin jumper wires, but it's what I got right now. All right, I'm going to connect them together and make them essentially one battery. And it's going to pull this other guy down to his level because uh, I want to try to bring them up in a pair. Alright, so now we're looking at 5.8 and dropping. And it's going to settle down to half a volt. Alright? So, I'm going to hook up the motor again. Now this is a little 6 volt battery that I have. There's a solar panel up here in the window. I'm propping it up with a radio. And then that's connected to this. Oops, the clip is coming off. This battery's terminals are too small for anything I have. And this is sitting at five and a half volts, right? And there's a little bit of charge on it. But this has been running for a day and a half. This little battery has been running this motor for a day and a half, this little six volt battery. 
Now I'm going to connect the power again to the motor. And so it self starts. Now, this little guy running the motor drops down to what? Oops, wrong term, polarities. It barely shows, yeah, 5.4 volts. It drops a tenth of a volt. Now these guys are going to start showing a higher voltage, probably a super high voltage. What do we have here? Oh, we're throwing roughly 3 volts. Okay, does the camera show that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we're showing about 3 volts under charge. And we're going to let these sit until they uh, stop taking a charge. And then I'll discharge them a bit and then cycle them through. Let me just double check that my uh, wire is connected properly here. That should show the same voltage, 3.0, whatever. Around 3 volts. Okay. And we're going to leave it run. Thank you, Melanie. Hey, guys. I'm performing experiments with this machine. Let's call it a machine. And I hauled out... Now these batteries are seven, eight years old. I hauled these out of my truck camper. These were my original two batteries from when I started experimenting with the Bedini motor and followed the set of experiments set out by John Bedini himself in order to get into the more advanced uh, Bedini schoolgirl forums. And those two batteries are quite old They've been sitting around uh, neglected for a few years, and they were eight and a half volts, uh, between eight and a half and nine volts. One was around nine, one was eight and a half. I found out something interesting because I know that this machine works best with good, healthy batteries, and right now I'm experimenting with dead batteries. But you'll notice there's no sound, it's silent. Now that I have better batteries. They're not good, but they're better. I'm sitting at 10.65 volts and the current is negligible. There's barely any current being pulled. Now, I can adjust the motor speed and you'll start to hear the difference in the sound and you'll see the difference in the battery voltage go up but also the current will go up. So I've right there, here's what you'd call a sweet spot. The best timing for the best charging and the lowest current. But when I, un I loosen the screw here, and let's go left counterclockwise on the timing, and it starts to make some noise. Now the battery's going up, but look at that current. Terrible. Looks like I almost stalled the motor. I almost stalled the motor. All right, there it goes. Now I'm getting back in there. Had it mad there for a while. Now I can go back into the quiet zone, and that current drops down to no, almost nothing. But so did the battery voltage. So I've got to adjust this to get the maximum speed out of the motor, maximum battery voltage, but less current. And now you see the current is coming up a little. So I gotta back that down a little. See that current dropped considerably. Go down a little bit more and you start to hear noise. Bring it back out of there. There's a quiet silent running mode to this. Where it seems to be really happy. Absolutely silent. Hardly any current drain. And decent battery charging. So I'm gonna tighten that set screw and let this run. And this is using the new, brand new 12 volt battery to run it because my little 6 volt guy is on the solar panel in the window charging. These two guys I took off for now because these were the 0 0.5 volt batteries when I, when I got them they were 0 0.5 volts and um, well I'm letting them rest a little bit but I'm also I'm cycling out different batteries um, and experimenting what this machine can do with really really dead batteries and later we'll move on up to using good batteries once I've restored something to usable condition then I'll use that to run the machine 
And then I can start playing around with little good batteries and moving ourselves up to bigger and bigger batteries. So you have voltages trying to get up to 10.7 uh, now. So we're increasing the, the charge on that pair of batteries. Um, now one thing I've learned with the Bedini motor is the Bedini motor did not care how many batteries you put on the output. Uh, you could put one battery, five batteries, ten batteries on the output and it didn't change the current. We'll be experimenting with that as well in the future once I get some batteries going here and I've got to find some batteries that are the same and also get them in, in uh, good shape. So once we get to the big battery bank of the house, that's going to be exciting. Anyway, I just wanted to share you with you uh, some updates of what's going on here. It's pretty cool stuff.